Hello, welcome to another Flandrian Friday. The weather is not so good, so I stayed inside and it was a great moment for me to talk with one of our guests, Garrett Cartman. He's not only a writer, he's also a writer. He wrote three books. I can show you two of them because the third one is next to my bed. It intrigued me so much, I started reading it right away. He changed his work a few years ago and he is uh, now the owner of Example Digital, a recruiting company specialized in digital marketing. We had an interesting conversation and I want to share that with you. Hello, Garrett. You are in our Flandria Hotel. Can you explain a little more why you're here? Sure. Um, I, I've been to Flanders a few times. Obviously, if you, if you love cycling, you come to Flanders and thought, well, what better for a few days break from everything at home to come here, ride my bike and actually get some work done. Tell us a little more about the rides you get in. Uh, what makes you so excited about it? I guess if you, if you like cycling and you like the history of cycling and you watch it, you see Flanders and you see, you, you see these routes and it's like, you know, if, if you put it in football terms, it's like being able to play at Wembley Stadium, that you can go on the Outer Quarimont, you can go to the Paterberg, and you can ride up the Mur de Gerasbergen, and it's, it's there, it's completely free. I rode up um, the Kepelmoor two nights ago, and there was nobody there, it was amazing. And I got to the top, I popped my bike against it, and the bells rang out. There's nothing better. Garrett, you're not only here as a rider, but you're also a writer, because you brought us some books you were writing over the last years, and that proves how much of a bike and cycling lover you are. Can you tell us a little more about your books and Maybe you get some inspiration over here to yeah. write another book? Yeah, maybe. Um, so I've written three books so far. Um, I, th I think cycling is just steeped in stories. And, you know, everything I do is all about storytelling. You know, running a business is about storytelling. Um, and cycling has so many stories and so many allegories uh, and metaphors for everything we do. Um, I wrote about the 1919 Tour de France. It was the first tour after the, um, after the First World War. And I thought, well, if I want to tell a story, how am I going to tell this story? It has to be something materially different from everything that's gone before it. So I, I researched all the riders and I learned their voices. I learned how they spoke. And I took it upon myself to use their voices to actually recreate the story in the first person multiple first people. Um, and then with Walco, the 1956 book, I always looked at Roger Valkoviak as someone who, who was much maligned, but for no reason. And I thought, well, someone needs to right a wrong. So I thought I'd tell the story of the entire tour. And then Coblet and Kubler is about two riders that most people confuse because they both start with K and they both won a Tour de France, but they're complete polar opposites. And it's a story, again, that hasn't been told. And I thought it's something that needed to be told in a different way to other books, in an entertaining way, um, so that people could understand these two riders. And actually, you see parallels of Coblet and Kubler throughout the ages in cycling. So it's, it's fascinating for me to learn about these guys. As far as we understand, you're now in the recruiting business. Yeah. And you might know by now that Finding your talents and your values is something that is really close to my heart and also to Jamie's. So we really want to help people finding their values and their talents. How much is that a, a need in your field in recruitment nowadays? It's, it's everything. It's everything. And I have candidates who come to me and they, some of them are burnt out. Some of them have 
you know, they, they've been in almost abusive relationships with their bosses and with their, their job and they've been stuck doing the same thing for so long. Um, and it's not good for them. And what you try to do is you, you try to find the right place for them because it's kind of a responsibility. I think, I mean, one of the reasons I set up a recruitment agency is I felt that most people were doing it wrong. There are a few good recruiters, but the majority of recruiters are cowboys. And I felt, especially in marketing recruitment, there was no one who actually understood marketing or who could say to a candidate, look, you've got all of these skills, you've got these talents, maybe you should be thinking about going slightly off course and trying this. And if you do that, I know the perfect company where you'd be happy. That's something I never experienced when I was working with recruiters in digital marketing. And I get comments from candidates, you know, I mean, I had one last week who said, you helped me find my tribe, oh. um, which is so nice, you know, it makes it worth it. It's, you know, I, I think recruitment needs something like that. And that's the, the angle we try to take um, is if you just do the right thing, if you put the right people in the right place, they'll be happy, yeah. they'll be productive, they'll do really good work. And the company that recruited you to go find them they'll be happy to, so it's a virtuous circle. How much or where is a setting like the Flandrian Hotel helping you in your days you come here to think and enjoy writing? How much is that helping you? Immensely. I mean, when you're at home, because I'm, I'm fully remote, so I'm at home, I, I wake up, I drop the kids to school, I come, I do my work, I've got VAT returns, I've got the payroll, I've got to go win new business. I have two people reporting to me, so I have to work with them, uh, and they're absolutely brilliant, and they take a lot of the weight off. We all pull our weight in finding candidates, finding clients, and we're doing the doing all the time. You're always doing the doing. And then pick the kids up, feed the kids, and do some more work. You're doing the doing. When do you think? I think when I'm on the bike. And, you know, I might get a couple of hours at the weekend when I'm at home to go out on the bike into the Chilterns. Um, but here I've had all week uh, to go ride in some amazing places. You know, not just the Quaramonts, but up um, north of Brackle. Uh, there's some incredible places. I've never seen them before. And the hills are tough. <laughs> and when you're on your bike, you only think about riding your bike and your mind empties and you actually have a chance to think and put things in order. And it's when you have those moments of silence, those moments of solitude, that you can actually start piecing together the bits of your business into that one coherent story that I was talking about before. That's when you start to think about proposition, you start to think about values and trying to reinforce those values that you're not thinking about when you're constantly doing the doing and doing your VAT returns and your payroll. You're not thinking about values when you do that, you're thinking about it when you're on your bike. It's part of the reason why I started riding, what, 15 years ago, I was a relative latecomer to cycling, but it clears your head, it makes you think, and it gives you that time to focus and piece that story back together. Thank you very much, Garrett. That's a pleasure. If you like this vlog, please give us a thumbs up, connect if you did not already, so that you see more of our vlogs. If you would have questions regarding our Think Week and what we can do for that, please, you can email us or give us a call. And then I would say, hey, it was nice having you. See you for the next Flandrian Friday and have a great weekend and a good day. Bye.